We're thinking in this video about the polymerase chain reaction, PCR. I'm sitting in the garden, so if you hear a little bit of bird song, that sort of thing, um, airplane noise, then hey, that's the way it is. It's a nice afternoon, so I'm outside. PCR is going to be used if you have a small sample of DNA which you want to amplify. And by amplify, we mean starting with just a very few copies and ending up with lots and lots of copies. Let's say you found some crime scene DNA and you want to amplify a tiny sample into a much larger sample uh, so that you can do DNA fingerprinting and all it involves is just making repeated copies of a sample of DNA between two points how does it work well as we go through it look at this diagram and we'll go through the stages step by step so we start off at this top point with our sample of double-stranded DNA and we're going to amplify between this point here and this point here. Just a few notes before we start. Well let's first of all think about the uh, polymerase which we're going to use. We're going to need to use a DNA polymerase at some stage and we're going to have to use a thermostable one. Uh, why we're we going to have to use one, a thermostable one? Well, we, we don't want to have to replace it each cycle and we are going to have to um, so get my cursor back uh, here it is, here we go. Uh, we're going to have to heat our DNA up to separate the strands to take it from being double-stranded to single-stranded. If we're going to heat it up, and we're going to heat it up to 95 degrees C, uh, we're going to need to use thermostable DNA polymerase. This thermostable DNA polymerase comes from thermophilic bacteria, um, typically the thermophilic bacteria which live in hot vents, uh, for example, uh, down on the mid-Atlantic ridge. So we separate our DNA strands uh, by heating them up to 95 degrees C and uh, you know lots of key words going in here that you're going to use in questions when answering questions. That's going to break our hydrogen bonds between the strands. Now we add DNA primers. Uh, DNA primers, you can see primer 1, primer 2 here. Um, here we go, primer 1. Uh, primer 2. We're going to add these in. At this stage, they're not going to bind on. They're a short strand of SS DNA, that single strand of DNA, and it's going to be complementary to this sequence. We're going to have to know a little bit of this sequence before we start off. These primers are added in excess, and then we cool things down. Cool it down to 40 degrees C, and our primers bind on to those complementary sequences. Now, why did we add them in excess? Well, if we don't add them in excess, then we can't be sure that our DNA won't simply re to itself. So we have far, far more primers in there than we do initial samples of DNA. And as it cools down, those hydrogen bonds are able to reform, and the primers can anneal onto that complementary sequence. Then we raise the temperature back up to 70 degrees C. 70 degrees C is uh, going to be the optimum temperature for our thermostable DNA polymerase. So, next stages. How far have we got? Well, we've got to this stage here. We've cooled it down. We've got primer 1 annealed there, primer 2 annealed there, and now we've got to this stage here, our DNA polymerase extending the primer uh, so, our DNA polymerase comes along and binds to these double-stranded regions. The reason for using primer 1 and primer 2, or for using primers, is that DNA polymerase cannot bind to single-stranded DNA. So therefore, if we don't have primers in there, and we just have separate strands of single-stranded DNA, our DNA polymerase is going to hang around saying, well, you know, I no idea what to do, really. What am I meant to do here? I need some double-stranded DNA. You've got to give me some double-stranded DNA here. So, that's what we do. And we give it primers onto which it can bind. And then, it can do its stuff. So, it uses free DNA nucleotides. So, that's deoxy ATP, deoxy GTP, deoxy TTP, and deoxy CTP to extend the primer. Uh, and it makes a copy of each strand. Uh, that's in this third stage here. Oh, my, my cursor's disappeared from my screen again. There it is. Here we go. So, 
on come our free DNA nucleotides and they're going to bind on here and DNA polymerase is going to make a copy of it and it extends these strands that one that way and that one that way and as that happens it doubles the amount of DNA it doubles the number of DNA strands and then you just repeat uh, you repeat uh, simply by heating to 95 degrees C to denature the strands and split them up into single strand of DNA by cooling to 40 to allow primers to anneal and by heating it to 70 degrees again to allow the uh, DNA polymerase to do its stuff that is a cycle that's all you have to do with it that's the beauty of it because all you've got to do is put it on a timer and a water bath and the water bath will do the rest for you and then you amplify it by 2 to the power n where n is the number of cycles so if you're going to run 10 cycles you'll increase the number of strands of DNA you have by 2 to the power 10 and so you can see very quickly you can amplify something from just a very few samples to many many samples and that is PCR